there was a lot of new kids that wanted to play volleyball after the European Championship. The same thing happening with basketball, European Championship, with all the other sports. Le pozdrav sem tine urnout in poslušate first tempo. Our first guest for 2021 is probably the best Slovenian volleyball player. He is vice European champion for 2015 and 2019, also vice champion in the Polish and in the Italian league. He is a very good all around player and once said, any player likes to spike, but I do not dislike even the skills of the second line. Ladies and gentlemen, Tine Urnaut. Mr. Urnaut, uh, first of all, I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a nice light into the new year. And of course, thank you uh, about uh, accepting our invitation to be a guest in our podcast, First Tempo. Uh, the first uh, question I would like to ask you is um, linked to, to Slovenian volleyball as a whole, because you are one of the best Slovenian uh, players now and I, I would say also in the history of Slovenian volleyball. What do you believe is the main reason for the huge progress of Slovenia lately? Ten years ago, you were an average team and now you are two times a vice European champion. Yes, thank you first for the best wishes. I wish you Merry Christmas and uh, a splendid new year to you too. And then to the question. I think that, uh, yes, the main reason that our national team made such a progress through the last years is that when I started, when I was really young, with 19 years, I was one of the first that went to play outside of my generation. We had a good generation in the junior European Championship, pre-juniors, you know, these uh, generations. We had a good generation, some older guys, but then... They were, we were all playing in Slovenia. And when we started to go play outside in the better league, in the better leagues like the Italian, players were following me. And uh, I think that that is uh, one of the biggest, the, one of the most important things that we did. We went to play in the strong leagues for the strong clubs. So we grew as individual players. And then we came back to the national team stronger and stronger each year. So this, uh, let's say, fashion, it's not fashion, but this style, uh, also the younger players started to get motivated to go to play outside of Slovenia, get more experience. So all the players grew individually. And then we bring all this experience and grow to the national team, where we started, you know, with the first, our first success was with the... Uh, Andrea Gianni as our uh, coach and uh, since then, you know, we went, we started to work better and then the results came. What do you need, in your opinion, more in order to make the last step, step to the top? You played the final in the European Championship in Bulgaria in 2015. You played again uh, in the final against uh, Serbia in 2019. What do you think you need in order to make the last step? It's difficult to say. Like the first uh, championship was like a big, big beginning for us. Then uh, we continued playing and winning this uh, World League. We wanted to continue to play in the VNL, but then we were not inserted there. We need to play again the qualification. I think the, the biggest problem for our team was that we were missing the strong matches because the only com strong competition for us was the European Championship which happens every two years two years and without playing the VNL you know we lose also the last European Championship we had in the quarterfinals Bulgaria uh, no in the eighth of the eight, final eight we finals. had Bulgaria yeah that was a very tough match for us then again in the quarterfinals Russia it was one of the favorites for the championship. We beat them. Then we lose a lot of energy. Also in the semi-final against Poland, it was a tough match for us. And maybe some more matches of this kind, also then the final, we lose a lot of energy, you know, to get there. For example, now if you think about uh, also the Russian Cup, Zenit St. Petersburg lose a lot of energy to beat Kazan in the semi-final. Then in the final, it, you know, 
you know what I am trying to say. Yeah, and you know, to Moscow won easily. Yes. Yes, they were. You know, you they need didn't lose you need so to much adapt. Energy. Yes, yeah. we need to adapt, and uh, we need to. You know, this I think these tournaments were a great experience for us. Also, how to play the finals. You know, we arrived there, but you always arrived. You know, we we missing a little bit of energy, the last yeah. energy to do the extra step. And uh, we learn from this also the qualification for the Olympics. Yeah, we uh, can against France. Yeah, yeah, we can remind for the listeners that you you gained this place in the in the volleyball nations league, but still this year 2020 there was no uh, volleyball nations league due to the coronavirus pandemic, and uh, hopefully you're going to be in the in the league in the 2021. So so yes uh, yeah we hope that uh, a lot uh talking about the national team uh, a little bit of a side question i'm interested who invented this nickname of uh, dejan vincic vinko which means i win in italian it's a nice one as a nickname because i, I believe yes. that i believe that giuliani used it uh, during the timeouts your coach alberto giuliani is now yes. coach yes yeah but we we use this is his uh, nickname since he was very young because uh, vincic there is also like a shorter is vinko but in slovenian vinko is uh, actually a name it was like a long time that we used this uh, nickname for him it's faster and uh, also then with the italian coach it's it has <laughs> even a nicer sound uh, one further question about uh, slovenia Uh, what do you think is the reason for a small country like Slovenia to be successful in so many sports? You have a great basketball uh, team, of course, with uh, Luka Doncic. Uh, you have volleyball, you have amazing alpine skiing, you have cross country, you have ski jumping. You have also uh, one uh, uh, very uh, big player in the NHL, Andrzej Kopitar. Maybe I'm even missing something. Yes. Yeah, I think that the, the sports culture in Slovenia is also really strong. And uh, thankfully, we have many idols in these sports. And now, as this, as we make good results, I think that Slovenians are highly motivated. Also, because we are such a small country, if you want to succeed, you know, you need to work even harder. We are highly motivated, and I think that this that we have successful sports brings, you know, even young people to get more interested into sports and. You know, there was a lot of uh, new kids that wanted to play volleyball after the European Championship. The same thing happening with basketball, European Championship, with all the other sports. So many or many young people get involved into sports fast. And uh, then, you know, we have now, I think, pretty good experience coaches and uh, people who work in the sport. That give us the uh, the guidelines, you know how to succeed, how to work hard, how to be disciplined, and with the hard work, then eventually the results come. And in this regard, uh, did you train any other sports uh, besides volleyball? Yes, yes, I many sports. I think I was first time skiing when I was five years old, swimming even before that. Then I was doing this for. A long period. Then I tried basketball, uh, football, a uh, handball, all the different sport athletics. And uh, then at some point, I always knew that I will, that I want to play volleyball like my family. And at some point, I put all my focus to volleyball. And slowly, there was not any more time for other sports. The last question about Slovenia: Why do you play in green kits since you don't have green in your flag? That's also interesting for me. Yeah, yeah first, uh, yeah, because Slovenia is, uh, you know, this is from the sports committee, and also Slovenia is a really, really green country, you know. But this, uh, I think, was like from the Olympic committee for a long time that uh, they decided for this color, from from mm-hmm. my knowledge. <laughs> You played under Radostin Stoichev in Trento and Modena under Gianni. Kovac and Giuliani in the national team, great coaches, all of them. Tell me what is the difference in the approach of all, all those great managers, of course, shortly, because, yeah, 
it's uh, it's 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 not a very uh, very comprehensive topic but still maybe some some main points yeah uh, i will try to it's difficult it's difficult to put it in a few words but i think also i i was uh, i'm thankful i'm very happy that i had many good coaches in my career and uh, i think that the things of them are that they they try to do everything to win you know that that is the main goal of the team to to play to win and uh, i think that makes a, a great coach that they try to to help in every possible way the players to perform at their maximum to push them or in one way or another to you know become better every day and uh, the team becomes eventually better every day and the thing that we step on the court every day to to play to win uh, is one of the most important things mentioning uh, Rodostin Stoichev uh, why do you think this situation this scandal broke out in Modena in 2018 and do you think that it was possible for all of this to be prevented ha uh, this is this is a difficult question uh, for sure ev- most everything can be prevented i don't know how I I don't know how can I answer this question. It's it's never good when it ends uh, a situation like that but uh, also on the other hand this is um, sports and we see many situations like that uh, not only in volleyball football everywhere uh, it's just sometimes some things don't work out good but like this the same situation with the clubs and players when they when the club or the player is not happy then in one way or another the things finish but uh, i think that the most important thing is that you can continue your career and uh, continue to work for what you love there after you played last year and this year uh, 2020 in china and so we all know what what happened there and there after in the in the worldwide First of all, uh, why did you make this decision to go to China and then of course linking all of this to this uh, awful COVID pandemic, what happened there and uh, how how did China tackle the, the the whole situation and uh, how things developed uh, after that? First when I came there was after the European Championship and we were actually just practicing for for two months waiting for the championship in January. So I left for the qualification at the end of November but when I came back after the qualification for the Olympics games there started to come out some cases of the virus in in the middle the end of January the in the end of January there were more and more cases and at some point Chinese government uh, stopped uh, everything they shut down they locked down the cities and we were in Shanghai and uh, we were just going from the hotel straight to the gym and back and uh, there was almost no life in the city everything was closed down so there was this was a kind of way that uh, the chinese started to you know to fight against the virus they immediately sent us home after that and we went in the 1st of february we came to euro back and uh, continue to practice and we were waiting if the season finishes or uh, we go for the next season and uh, it was like the whole summer because of the virus everything was uncertain and uh, then in the end again i prolonged the contract because i respected uh, the chinese that were uh, very Uh, professional even though that we didn't play any matches there and i felt that uh, i should respect them and uh, i s- renewed the contract uh, wanting to play there and finish the season that was programmed from october until november november until january and uh, i could have come back to euro to play the rest of the season but then also the problem started with the virus again and uh, in the end in the end i i came here and uh, started to play for milano my last question is in your instagram profile you posted a picture in memory of the deceased uh, diego armando maradona whom do you consider as the maradona of volleyball maradona of volleyball Hi, it's difficult to say At, at this point, Maradona of volleyball, you think a player that stopped playing, 
or a player that is still playing? Both. I mean, I mean, somebody, somebody. Uh, let's say that somebody that uh, who one one day we can call of, of maybe the greatest player. Of course, if we talk about football, this is this is not uh, this is a controversial topic because some people say Pelé, some people say Maradona, other, another say. Yeah. But your opinion, maybe on the on the best player in history. Let's uh, let's take it in this way. Yeah, it's difficult. There were so many difficult players. And the biggest difference maybe is, you know, that the football world is so, so much media and it's so much more promoted than volleyball. And it's, you know, easier to decide one on another. I think there were many, many great players from Gianni, Milkovic, but really many, many. But the one that I have the most respect for and I think that is one of the greatest players of all time for me is Sergei Tetyukin. But again, it's it's difficult. He's not so famous, uh, you know, it cannot be compared to anything in football, but he had an amazing career even with 40, 41, two years old. He still played on the highest level possible, played so many Olympic Games and one of the most complete players that uh, because he played through the generation of, of volleyball from 2000 until 2020 yes and volleyball changed a lot uh, mr Olaf, yes. again i would like to thank you for accepting to be the guest in our uh, podcast first tempo and again i would like to to wish you a happy new year and a lot of success with uh, your uh, current team uh, milano Thank you a lot. Thank you for the invite and uh, I wish you also everything uh, good and all the best in the new year. And dear listeners, I would like to thank you again uh, for listening to us. You can uh, like uh, this uh, podcast. You can also listen to it in the in the uh, podcast platforms like uh, Spotify, of course. And if, if you're a fan of our content, you can also support us in Patreon. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and See you soon again. Bye-bye.